Hello. So in today's video, I'm going to be decluttering my bedroom closet. It is on the smaller side and I share it with my partner. Uh, we're very lucky that it's not the only closet we have. We also each have enough space so that we both have our own dresser. So it's not all the clothing storage, but I do tend to uh, kind of leave things in there that I don't wear that often. I've also amassed like a really big collection of tiny bags uh, for like traveling and going on trips, just having little bags to throw things into. Um, and I feel like I probably have more than I need. Uh, so I thought it would be a good minimalism exercise to go through this closet, declutter it, go through all of my stuff. I'm not gonna touch my partner's stuff, but just gonna go through my stuff today and then some shared things like some towels and blankets and linens that are in there as well. Um, but yeah, so that's what we're gonna do today. We have kind of a boring backdrop behind me right now, uh, but we are gonna look in the closet as well and try on everything before we decide what we're gonna keep and what we're gonna donate and what needs to just be trashed if anything's like super old. Uh, because the closet is where a lot of my clothing lives that I don't wear that often, everything's probably good enough to donate once I like wash it or get it dry cleaned. Um, so we'll probably have quite a few donations uh, at the end of this video, uh, but let's get started. So I'm halfway done with the decluttering process uh, for my bedroom closet. I went through all of the hanging clothes. I tried everything on, decided what I'm keeping, what I will be donating. I will be revealing everything that's being donated uh, at the end of this video. Uh, and I am decluttering a lot more uh, than I did in my last video. Uh, so I think that'll be very satisfying. Uh, so hanging clothes are done. Uh, the next step is to go through, I have a bin of smaller bags. I also have a bin of like medium to large bags. So like purses, backpacks, those kinds of things. And then I just have some like uh, linens that I also wanted just to take a quick peek at. Um, and then I also have my, uh, I have a cardboard box right here that has a lid. Uh, anything small that I'll be donating, I'll be putting in this box. And I think that'll just be easy to corral everything um, that's not like clothing that can be placed in a bag to be donated. Uh, so we'll go through small bags first. Uh, I have quite the collection and then purses and backpacks. Okay, so here's everything that was in that bin. These are my small bags and assorted things. Um, right off the bat, I have a, a jumbo heating pad right here. Um, so I'm gonna definitely keep that. I'm just gonna stick it right back in the bin. Okay, so next I have, if we're going like largest to smallest, I guess, I don't really know. Um, I have this uh, Barnes and Noble tote bag that I got um, when I bought books. A little while ago and didn't bring a bag and we have a plastic bag ban in New Jersey so I ended up having to buy a bag. Um, I think now that I'm more used to bringing my own bags to stores um, I'm not gonna run into this situation again 
Uh, also, if I forget a bag, it's not gonna really help that I have this at home. Uh, and I think it was only a dollar, so this is going to go away. Next, I have this little travel bag that I got from Daiso. I got it to be able to put um, like paperback books inside and like hardcover, hardcover books or just basically physical books uh, so that when I'm traveling, they are safe. There's like a layer of protection between my books and like any toiletries or anything else random. Um, so I'm definitely gonna keep this because that's super helpful. Next, I have this little pouch that I got from the Strand Bookstore. Um, I actually put my Kindle in it when I'm traveling, just a way to um, keep it safe. I do have a case on my Kindle, but I think this is also super helpful just to keep it safe in case something does spill in a bag. I think just some extra protection from other things in there, like a water bottle or you know whatever toiletries I might be carrying. It's helpful to have something like this. So next I have this uh, dust cover, like storage bag for a purse. I have a vegan leather purse that looks like a bookstore that's very cute. And it came with this, um, this pouch to protect it. Um, and I've never used it, to be honest. Um, and I've just realized now, like, the bag is usually just stored in my closet and totally fine. And if I really needed this, I would have looked for it. So we're also going to get rid of this. And then next I have some, um, some wrist uh, braces. I have a teeny one and a big one. Uh, sometimes, um, of course they're covered in cat hair. Uh, sometimes I have a flare up of like carpal tunnel and it helps to uh, be able to put a wrist brace on. Like uh, the teeny one is good if I'm more active and I still need to use my wrist and the big one is good if I'm sleeping. And I have wrist pain, uh, so unfortunately, I think I do need to keep these, even though I would love to no longer have wrist pain. That'd be great. This is like a fold-up um, reusable bag. Definitely keeping that. That's super helpful. Um, these little cat bags are super cute. And I found when I was traveling that I just didn't have enough tiny bags for like jewelry or toiletries. Um, and like makeup. So I'll have like a bag for toiletries, a bag for makeup, and then a bag for jewelry. And I like being able to keep like necklaces separate from earrings so stuff doesn't get like super tangled. So I'm gonna keep these guys. Um, I got this uh, when I studied abroad in England uh, in my college years. Um, and it's a cute little change purse. And since I only have one change purse, I think it's totally fine to, um, to keep it. This is a little makeup travel bag. Uh, this is definitely still useful and I don't have um, other, like this is my like travel bag if I wanna bring fewer uh, pieces of makeup than I keep in my regular makeup bag, so that's fine. And then in here I have a tiny bottle opener that was like a wedding a wedding favor. Uh, I don't think I need this. I am rarely out in the world where I I need a, a mini bottle opener, so we'll pass on that. I have my very cute koozie. I just have one koozie, so I think we're fine with keeping that. And then I also have this really cute um, card holder uh, if I don't want to carry my wallet, I can put stuff in this guy if I have like a really small bag I'm using. Uh, so we'll keep that. Okay, next I have a pile of bags and purses to go through. I have my work laptop case. I have to keep that for my laptop. I have a Jansport bag. This is like a really good like travel size, so we'll keep that. I 
have a tiny backpack. Um, this is super helpful if I'm going like on a bike ride and I just want to carry like a couple snacks and a water bottle and maybe a book. And then I have some purses. Uh, I also have just a brown leather bag that I use every day, um, which is not pictured here and we're not going to get rid of that. So we're going to, you know, we're good with this right now. Um, but going through these bags, I have this tiny coach clutch that's really old. Uh, this is helpful if I'm going to like a fancy event. It's the only clutch I own. Um, so we're probably going to keep that. I'm not in love with it, but like I need a tiny clutch and I don't want to, I don't want to buy a new one and like throw that one. I don't know where that would go. I would donate it. Obviously I wouldn't throw it out, but We'll just keep it for now until we come across something that we really love. I have this purse that is a book of spells and it's really cute and spooky and it also glows in the dark. Uh, and I actually do use this even though it seems like you could only use it in Halloween. Like I'll just pull it out whenever because it's really fun and puts a smile on my face. So yeah, I have my brown leather bag. This is my everyday bag. I can't really imagine um, swapping this out for another everyday bag. So my other purses are sort of just for fun, fun times. If I'm doing something fun, I'll, I'll swap out this purse for one of those bags. So this was my everyday bag previously. Um, it's still super cute, uh, but I don't think I'm gonna hold on to it just because um, oh, I guess I will hold on to it. Check everything before you donate it. Check every pocket, every zipper pouch, every bag. Do not, uh, do not just donate stuff willy nilly. There might be random cash hidden in a pocket. So definitely check every pocket before you let something go. Next, I have my bookshop bag. Um, this is also just a fun, a fun bag. Sometimes I wear this bag. Uh, there's no cash in it. Okay. Um, so yeah, we're going to keep this. This is super cute and fun. Look how cute that is. Yep. Um, and then lastly, I have this, uh, this cow print tote. Um, and this is just a good structured, uh, canvas tote bag. Um, that's like good for shopping or going to the park. So we're gonna keep that. And then I have another zip up foldable bag. Uh, like the other one, this one zips up super tiny and small. Uh, so that's helpful for shopping. And I won't need to buy another bag at Barnes and Noble next time I'm there, if I remember to bring that one. And then I also have, I also have a fanny pack. This is just super helpful. Um, I'm learning how to skateboard and I obviously want my phone and stuff in my pockets and, uh, and my keys and my pockets are just too small. Oh, chapstick, that's good. I was looking for this, so that's good. So yeah, so we're gonna keep that. So that is it for now. I went through and decluttered my bedroom closet as best as I could. I'm definitely getting rid of a couple items, um, some hanging clothes that I wasn't really wearing and some little smaller pieces that I had accumulated, some smaller items. I have a better idea of what I have in the closet. So hopefully I start wearing those clothes more often. The idea is obviously to be sustainable and reuse what I have and not buy more stuff and kind of continue to like overwhelm myself with like new things coming in that I need to like figure out, figure out how to maintain and figure out, you know, what outfits I'm going to wear them with and everything. Uh, so I think it was really helpful trying not to feel disappointed about how little I actually am getting rid of, but I think I'm now, you know, good at getting back into the decluttering mode. I've been out of it for a little while. 
Um, so it's helpful to kind of restart that process. I think over time I will get better at getting rid of stuff. I am just super nervous about getting rid of a bunch of stuff and then going through a buying cycle again, which I did a little while ago, like right around, um, you know, right around when the pandemic started and uh, I began working from home. I definitely bought a bunch of stuff, I think, to cope with my anxiety. So even though I, you know, previously had pared down to like a really minimalist wardrobe and really minimalist with my books and my hobbies and my hobby stuff and everything, um, it kind of just all came right back in because I wasn't being very mindful or intentional about uh, the first pass of the decluttering process, I was very much focused on having a specific number of things for each category and just getting rid of stuff to have a smaller number and feeling good about that number. Uh, but then having to buy stuff when I realized like that number didn't fit my life or I was missing things that I needed. So I don't want to get rid of a bunch of stuff and go through that again because that's a waste of money and resources and time and energy, blah, blah, blah. But I think that moving forward, as I continue to declutter again um, and get back into this decluttering mode, I'm gonna get rid of more stuff. I know it's gonna happen. I've been focusing on areas that are a little bit easier for me to declutter because uh, these are areas that I think about often, like my books or my clothing. Um, but there are definitely some things uh, scattered throughout my apartment that I don't really know how to get rid of them. Uh, that I can declutter um, and I think that when I get to those items and kind of tackle okay now what do I do with all this junk um, we will see a lot more decluttering a lot more progress it'll be way more satisfying like the pile of stuff I get rid of I think I'm just gravitating towards the easy stuff right now because I haven't decluttered in a while and I'm nervous about the hard stuff like tons of notebooks that you know I don't need to keep like trying to decide you know what do I do with those or like random furniture I've shoved in my uh, walk-in closet that I no longer use like who takes furniture donations I know some stores do some thrift stores do some places don't um, there's just a bunch of like weird random stuff that I need to go through that's going to be harder than books and clothes. So I'm starting with the easy stuff that I've definitely decluttered more often in the past just because it was easier to do. So, so yeah, so I'm going to try to be happy with the progress I made today and, you know, remind myself I know what I got in my closet now. So that's good. I'll start wearing it more often. Um, I don't think I need to buy any more clothing. So that's good. That's a step in the right direction. Uh, so yeah, so thanks so much for watching. I'll see you next time.